Hi, I'm Brett Middleton, and today in this video we're talking about the EGR valve on turbo diesel engines, which is the exhaust gas recirculation control, which is a big hot topic at the moment with the build-up of soot and sludge in turbo diesel engines. Now, this is a byproduct of the direct injection technology whereby engines no longer have uh, fuel, whether it's petrol or diesel, flowing in through the inlet manifold, which has a scouring and a cleaning effect of the inlet side of the engine. Now that they're direct injection, you get a buildup of a whole heap of uh, horrible nasties, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. By the way, this is becoming a problem on turbo petrol or normal direct injection engines as well. So we're not just talking now about turbo diesel or turbo petrol, it can be normal direct injection diesel or normal direct injection petrol engines. Now what happens is, let me explain a few acronyms first, EGR. EGR is exhaust gas recirculation and what happens is on a modern day engine to improve fuel economy and cold start, the engineers at the manufacturers of these vehicles try to reuse as much of the unburnt exhaust gases to recombust in the engine and on EGR modern day engines will recirculate the exhaust gas, recirculate it back in through the engine, hence it's called EGR and that then gives you a small improvement in fuel economy. Another thing that you need to be aware of, which I'll explain to you, is the relationship with the combustion blow-by. In high compression turbo diesel engines where you've got very, very big combustion pressures, you tend to get more blow-by from the um, cylinder walls down through the um, crankcase, and all of that pressure has to go out to the atmosphere somewhere, and this is then normally also uh, part of the emissions control system is recirculated through the inlet manifold. It's combusted because it's got a little bit of oil in it and again it's used for uh, improvement in fuel economy and then that goes out the exhaust. Now the horrible thing is, and on today we're talking about as the example, is a 3.2 Mitsubishi turbo diesel Triton. Now this could be any turbo diesel car, the current model 2.5 Mitsubishis, Subaru uh, turbo diesels as well as a whole heap of other models. But I'm going to show you the parts off this car because it's particularly bad to show you what is probably inside your car if you're driving one of these cars now. So when a car is running, um, we get the exhaust gas is recirculated back through this pipe and it is controlled by the EGR valve. Now this is the exhaust gas recirculation valve. It's controlled by the engine ECU. One side goes to this uh, inlet manifold side and the other side goes to the exhaust manifold side. So this particular part here bolts on the side of the inlet manifold. On the end here we have the throttle body. On this particular model it's an electronic throttle body which controls the engine entering the engine which effectively controls the amount of uh, power or torque um, via your accelerator pedal. And the dirty sooty exhaust gases which is full of uh, diesel particles, very very fine dusty particles, come through this valve into this manifold here and you can and then it goes into the inlet side of the engine so you can see this side's nice and clean and this side is full of this just absolutely horrible black scummy crap what happens is the black soot mixes on the inlet side with the oil blow-by and then the forms this thick black tar and then through the inlet manifold and you can see here, this is the manifold that is bolted on the side of the engine. And you can see all this horrible black stuff. And you can see just how thick it is. And then also this is the cover that sits on the top. And this is also, you can just, it's just particularly bad. Now the horrible thing is over a period of time, you can see that the, the ports leading into the engine, which is part of the way the engine operates all starts to clog up and generally just starts to restrict the performance of the engine. In a worst case scenario you can see this part of the manifold here is probably reduced by almost 30 percent. I'll, I'll show you some close-up pictures which is some still photos and you can get them off our Facebook page. That is the part that's bolted to the head. Obviously on the inside of the um, ports leading into the head is just as bad but it's not economical to pull the head off the engine. These parts now have to be sent away to be acid washed. Obviously it's very labor intensive to pull them all off and clean them. The good thing is there is actually a solution. Um, 
One of the things is new technology with um, uh, running special um, chemicals through the engine when the engine is running from a service point of view. The other one is, ironically, Mitsubishi for some period of time when these cars were particularly bad were actually replacing whole inlet and exhaust manifolds under warranty. But of course this is now just a characteristic of what you need to do to maintain your engine and it becomes a cost of maintenance. The EGR valve on most modern day engines is controlled, not the throttle body, but the EGR valve is controlled by the engine control unit, the ECU. And if you've got the right tuning software, that can be controlled as well. So this particular car first came in for us to do a power kit upgrade with the tune of the factory ECU with our custom tuning software. We diagnosed this as being particularly bad and said, look, you're better off spending your money on fixing this first before we try to make it go better. Um, at least then you've got a maintained car which is operating correctly first before we then try to make it go even quicker. The upside is after this has all been cleaned and we then do the custom ECU tune, um, at less than 10% throttle, the EGR will only work and as soon as you go over 10% throttle, the EGR valve is completely closed. So at 90% of the throttle application, none of this will happen and the client moving forward will have a significant saving in long-term maintenance. Now, a little trick that other people do, depending on where you are in the world, is to put a, a small washer in the pipe that leads from the other side of the engine. So the EGR valve never sees any bypass EGR at all, even if it's open. Put a little hole in it and that restricts the flow. The downside of that is if you get it wrong, it brings on a check engine fault code on the dash of your car and the car won't run properly. The other side of it is when you do want EGR at really light throttle um, to get good fuel economy, you don't get any of that at all. So you end up with a horrible um, performing car with bad fuel economy. The other interesting thing is with the custom tune of the map that we've derived is on light throttle, you don't have a lot of engine load, which means you don't have a lot of soot going out the exhaust, which means you don't have a lot of sooty EGR. You'll still have EGR going through the engine, but it won't have a lot of soot, so therefore you won't have much soot build up. And remember again, you're only, it's only at 10% throttle inputs. The other small improvement to consider as well is all of this, technology is carried across all the turbo diesel engines we work on. My turbo diesel Forester rally car has an EGR valve, which again is custom tuned as part of our upgrade map. The 2.5 litre Triton, the Great Wall turbo diesels, um, and so on. As we move into the new direct injection technology cars, um, these cars will also benefit some, from some of these more radical changes in the way we have to look after our cars. So there you have it. That's the dirty side of what a lot of people don't know when it comes to turbo diesel technology. This now has to go and sit in an acid bath for about two days. Um, basically it's a giant, ginormous dishwasher for engine parts. Um, I'll take some still photos when it comes back, show you how it all goes back together. But um, for today, I really hope this video has helped you understand more about the hidden maintenance costs with turbo diesel um, and direct injection engines. And um, obviously there's a whole heap of other info you can get off our website. You can download the power kit document so you can learn about how we can improve it and fix this part on your car. And of course we're here to help you via email, phone, or come and say day to us here at our workshop in Sydney. But for now, I'm Brett Middleton, thanks for watching.